and then going into Zacapo, Michoacan, Mexico, out of Blythe, California, in Prescott, Arizona, Bobby and Rosie Pignon. Um, I got saved in 1995, I believe it's April 2nd, was during Easter weekend. So I got saved then um, in the church on Main Street. And I just got tired of my life, got tired of the in and out of prison stuff with me and my boyfriend, who's now my husband, but it was pretty bad. I had to go to jail. And so I got saved on the streets with no, no communication with him, I was done. I, was, I didn't want to be with him anymore at the time. Well, I particularly had a pretty glorious salvation. I got saved during the same year. Um, and that was in August of 1995. I was in prison. I, had, I was really tired of just doing time, um, trying to raise my kids and doing what I was doing. It was just getting really, really old uh, for me. And some of my friends had already caught in like 25 lives. So. One day we was lifting weights and a guy came and asked me if I wanted to get saved. God really moved and he prayed a simple prayer, God be merciful to be a sinner. And God touched my life. And I've never been the same since. I, I know that I really felt forgiven and it was just a tremendous, tremendous blessing to be able to do that. Yeah. So, I got followed up by um, Isis Martinez and uh, Becky Roshan, Valerie. You know, they just came and encouraged me to serve God, and so I did. And, and that, uh, during that time that you know that I had gotten saved, we just basically um, me and my kids locked into the church, and we just served God from there. And you know, uh, our letters crossed paths with each other. You know, he sent me a letter saying that you know he wanted to be with me, and that you know I'm going to serve God with or without you. And my letter crossed the same way as his did, with the same saying that I'm going to serve God with or without you because I'm saved. And then from then on. Um, I just pray, God, you know, if it's your will, we'll get married every night, every day. God, if it's your will, it'll happen. You know, if it's not, you just help us keep, keep that communication for the sake of our children. And uh, he got out November 9th. Yes. Yeah. And then November 17th, we got married. Um, and we stayed from the 9th to the 17th. We lived clean. We made that promise to God, you know, we're going to stay straight. And then November 17th, we got married, and we've been saved and serving God ever since. And it's 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 powerful. It's, it's just a good thing because we would not be together if we didn't make that commitment to God first and to each other. <laughs> well, when we were in Rubido, um, there was a lot of Mexicans there, and we would have services, and we would say, "Well, I think you should be pre preaching in Spanish, man," and all that. Well, I don't know, you know, and, you know, there's just a lot of Mexicans there, just hundreds of them laid out all the time. And, and so um, during during that time, I was like, you know what, we, we probably you know, need to think about that. But one of the things that did happen in my life, and I just want to share a brief testimony, and that is uh, one year, my mother, um, after I got out, she told me, you know what, you're going to need this Bible. It's a Spanish Bible. It says uh, Santa Biblia, and so uh, she ordered it, put my name on it, and uh, you know it was just a tremendous blessing to be able to have it. And I was like, always like wondering, like, why did she give me a Spanish Bible, you know? 
And so it's just, um, it's, it's not coincidence. I believe it's God. I believe it's destiny for us to continue to move on forward in the things of God. And uh, going to Sakapo, that really opened up. The door opened up very, very wide open. Um, it's just a tremendous blessing to have a building there. And um, the church is behind us 100%. And it's just a, a great thing to be able to do and go and represent our fellowship in Mexico. I remember um, going, um, searching cities. We were searching cities and I remember Bobby had this thing, oh, let's go to San Bernardino. Oh, let's go here. And so we're driving in San Bernardino and uh, I told him, I said, I, I think you're called to uh, preach in Spanish. Let's find a Spanish neighborhood. And, you know, we went to a store, we saw a bunch of Mexicans and stuff like that. And then I remember uh, we were gonna go, we ran into a guy that actually in, I want to say it was Colton, maybe I could be wrong, but uh, we ran into him. His car broke down and and, uh, and stuff. And uh, my husband helped him out. It was just you know, it was just one of those things because he was in our fellowship. That broke down in San Bernardino. We helped him out a little bit, and then we went on from there. When we came home, and uh, it just you know we thought that that was the spot. And then when we got sent into Rubido. It was the same thing, Mexican store, just the Spanish speaking people that were all around that area where the church building was at at the time. And I just felt then, you know, you, you should be you should be preaching to Spanish. You know, Mexico, you should be preaching in Spanish. And so I believe with that, I believe this is totally God, you know, and there's no other way around it, just the door opening up and you know, just the favor that we've had so far. I believe that this is what we're supposed to do. Well, it was a tremendous blessing because um, um, Brother Jose he was inspired um, by some of the things that were going on in our church. And I remember him talking to uh, Pastor Neil about a building. So we were having dinner one night and Pastor, uh, um, they were like, um, you know, they were discussing a building and and the city of Sakapu and things like that. And then uh, I just said, I'll go, Pastor. And so um, everything, the ball started rolling. We went into so a couple of checked it out. It was it was a great place, and then they run Pastor and I and Penny and uh, Brother Jose. We went in there and had a great time, and as we went in there to go check it out, it was it's a beautiful city. It's uh, uh, about seventy thousand people there. They say in the whole area there's one hundred and forty thousand that's spread around there. And um, the thing is that some of you guys will probably be upset, but the hottest it gets there, I think it's like eighty-two degrees. But nevertheless, there is no Starbucks, there's no Walmart or anything like that, but it's a great place and um, um, it's transpired, um, the doors open wide, um, hopefully later on you'll see some pictures of the building and um, it, everything's just coming into fruition even as we speak. Just knowing that God's going to move there and to be able to use us because we're where we come from, it's just, it's just powerful to know that God can open that door and send us somewhere, you know, that, that we would have never thought we would never even be at today. If we were not saved, not serving God, we would not be where we are today and going into where we're going into, which is a couple of ways. You know, it's just a miracle that God's even use us to who are we to be One of the things for me uh, is, um, I'm really, I was really inspired by Pastor Mitchell um, early in my discipleship, um, coming to church and stuff. And Pastor Mitchell used to always talk about his church being planted in New Mexico. Um, just yesterday, I was talking to the pastor from Luna Dollars, and um, and just to think about just the wide range of things that can actually happen um, for us as a as a church, as a congregation here in Blythe, to plant a church in New Mexico, and um, just to follow the same vision that Pastor Mitchell had, and I believe it's a good thing to do. Knowing that um, I'm going to miss a lot of you guys. I'm going to miss my kids and my grandkids, but I know as long as we're doing what God has in store for us, that He'll take care of us as a family and as a whole, and um, just keep praying for us, and maybe we'll send you some Mexican candy in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you for your investment. 
We appreciate it, the opportunity that you've given to us. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Melanie. And uh, Alyssa, Ryan, and Jaden, you guys are awesome. I'm going to miss you guys as much, too. So I'm just um, I am going to miss the church on um, everybody, Pastor Edmund, all the, our baby churches, Alex, my um, brothers in the church. Um, I'm going to miss coffee the Pastor. And um, it's just going to be good. And, and uh, I'll be communicating with you guys regularly. I'll be sending pictures and stuff like that, no doubt. There'll be some little slideshows for you guys to check out. And you guys are probably going to start with you. I'll go past it. <laughs> but uh, it'd be good, man. Um, if, you, if you really notice uh, some of the things that we have to go through just to get there sometimes. Last time we were on planes, trains, and automobiles, it seemed like um, taxis and all kinds of stuff. And we finally got there with the blessing. But once we get there, get on the ground, uh, get some disciples going. Uh, I think it's going to break through, and who knows, man? We can have a leadership church there someday, and uh, it'll be a great blessing. Um, good beginnings, and uh, I know that I'll uh, probably see you guys in a couple of years when we come back. You just remember, it's not about us, it's about God and what He's going to do with us. So. Mm -hmm. The Lord would say, I have seen and heard your prayer. You, for a long time, you wonder, God, is this possible? Can I, can I get back in this nation? God, can I, is it possible for me? And God would say to you, it, it, it is possible, it's happening. And you need to run with that. Uh, uh, in the past, there's times you, you dreamed of this opportunity and this moment. Uh, this is not the first time you talk to your pastor and your heart is beat uh, uh, for this nation. And God would say to you, yeah, I, this is your moment. This is your moment. Run. Expect miracles. Yes. Expect the suit. You've seen miracles. And you've even prayed and said, God, 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 can I do that? God would say, yes, 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 you can do that. Yes, you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You can cast out devils. You over and over, you've asked God at different times. You've seen this and said, God, is this possible for me? The Lord would confirm it is possible. It's in your fingertips and in your heart and in your soul and in your faith. Expect me, saith God, to do a supernatural, powerful deliverance, healing work in Jesus' name. God, bring it to pass. I pray, God, in Jesus' name. Then going into Zacapo, Michoacan, Mexico, out of Blythe, California, in Prescott, Arizona, Bobby and Rosie Pinon.